So I really wanted to like the HTC 10, but it had some issues. The screen wasn't great, the battery was below average. However, the software was snappy, the audio quality was out of control, and plus it came with a really interesting form factor in a 5.2 inch phone which was not the norm at the time for flagship phones. Needless to say, I was really excited for the next HTC phone, so long as they kind of continued in that same direction that they were headed with the HTC 10. Then the U Ultra came out, and I'm being nice here, but it was a pretty significant letdown. The U11 is out now to try to make us forget about the U Ultra and remember the things that we actually liked about the HTC 10, and overall, it is a big improvement over the HTC 10 in quite a few areas. However, there are some areas with this phone where HTC does take a small step backward, which is a little disappointing, but overall, this is actually a really, really solid phone. In a vacuum, the phone is phenomenal. But in another vacuum that includes the Pixel, the 3T, the V20, the S8, you know, while still an excellent phone, I think it's going to struggle to stand out. Not because it's not a good phone, but just because there's nothing special really happening here aside from it just being a good phone. Unfortunately, consumers nowadays aren't just looking for good phones, they're looking for standout features when they're paying something close to a flagship price. But overall, this phone is incredibly solid and I think it's a good choice for a lot of people out there. The back of the phone is the real star of the show. As you guys can see, it's beautiful. This is the sapphire blue version, and just look at those fingerprints. It is a fingerprint magnet. I'm gonna wipe this thing down between every single take, and it's not gonna matter. It's gonna just be bombarded with fingerprints. It's a little slippery too, which in my opinion sort of defeats the purpose of making the back look as good as it does. Luckily, HTC does include a clear case for you guys to put on here, and it even leaves the edges open for that edge sense technology, which I'll get to in a bit. It does have pretty big bezels on here, as you guys can see, but it's not quite as big as the iPhone Plus bezels, which are just humongous, probably the biggest on any phone right now. From a visual standpoint, this thing is really impressive, but from a technical standpoint, hardware-wise at least, you know, it feels like it's a big phone. It feels like it doesn't need to be as big as it is. It's not the biggest phone on the market, but I still do feel like it's just a little bit too big uh, for as simple as this design is, although it is gorgeous, so I'm not hating on the design at all. Inside this phone, you've got the Snapdragon 835 processor, which is really, really good. It's got an SD card slot at the top here. Thank you, HTC, for including that. Every phone needs to include an SD card as far as I'm concerned. No headphone jack on the bottom. That's some of the big news here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but it's also water resistant, which is a really nice touch. IP67. That means you can put it in about a meter of water for 30 minutes, according to the website. It should be fine, but the website says fresh water. So I'm not quite sure how this would hold up in salt water if you guys took it to the beach and got it wet there. But it is really nice that they added water resistance as I think that is a really useful feature. Just to give you guys an idea of exactly how big it is, here it is up against the iPhone 6S Plus. It is not quite as tall, not quite as wide. There's how the thickness compares. Very similar on the thickness level. The iPhone is flat. This guy is curved. The U11 also has a very, very slight camera bump right there. Very small, not super noticeable. Doesn't really cause it to rock back and forth when you put it on the table. The volume rocker and the power button are both on the right side here. The volume rocker is excellent. Very clicky, very responsive and tactile. The power button, unfortunately, is really squishy, at least the one that I got. Uh, I don't know if all of them are like this. I only have one to test out. You know, it, it actually pushes down before it even registers. It almost goes flush with the exterior of the case here before I even hear the click or feel the click. I gave it to my wife to test out. She didn't care. She thought I was crazy, but I just figured I would let you guys know. Probably the worst feeling power button that I've had on a phone, but it's not a big deal. After a couple days, I got used to it and, and stopped even noticing it, really. Just want to show you guys how quick the fingerprint scanner is on this thing. I was really impressed with it. It's a lot faster than the HTC 10. You can see it never gives me a bad reading, uh, and it's probably faster than the iPhone. I think the only one that's faster than this is the OnePlus 3T. They've also got the capacitive buttons down here that's not software, so they're permanent. You cannot switch them. Resnaps on the right, back on the left. You can have them so the backlight is on permanently while the screen is on, or you can have that timeout to say battery. The only thing I wish here is that they were centered with the bezel. For whatever reason, they're slightly below the center line of the bezel, and I think they look a little funky like that, but it's not a deal breaker. You get used to that with daily usage. The U11 screen is a huge improvement over the HTC 10s in my opinion. The HTC 10 just did not get anywhere near bright enough, especially when I was in the car in direct sunlight, and especially if I had sunglasses with polarized lenses on. This one gets much brighter, it's much more visible when outdoors. Even in direct sunlight, it's still totally usable. It does reflect a lot, 
I'm not quite sure why it just it reflects a ton of light when you're using the outdoor, but I can still see the screen pretty well. I think overall this screen is going to be fine for most consumers nowadays. It doesn't have the punchiness of something like the Pixel or any Samsung display with the AMOLEDs, but as far as LCD goes, this is one of my favorite LCD displays that I've used in a while. You can also go into settings under display and change the color temperature if you want to. So you've got some warmer settings here some cooler settings you can bring it to over here if you like one style better than the other. The camera for the U11 is also a huge improvement over the HTC 10. Uh, some of the reviews and advertisements for this phone said that DXL Mark said that this is the highest rated camera of all time. Uh, I would never put this camera above the Pixel. I still think the Pixel has the best smartphone camera on the market by far. But this is really not far off the mark and I think that 9 out of 10 people are going to be really happy with the camera on this phone. Just to give you guys an idea of the shutter speed, it is a little slow compared to a phone like the Pixel. You can see there's about half a second delay here. But it's not the biggest deal in the world. When I'm outside, I couldn't really notice it. The only other issue that I really noticed with the camera app itself was that when HDR mode is enabled or on auto, it can get a little laggy sometimes. Uh, I would take a picture and it would just kind of stutter for a little bit and it was a little irritating to deal with. But the pictures always came out just fine. Video is okay. I don't generally take a ton of video, but I got a sample here for you guys so you can see uh, just stabilization while I was walking my dog. I wasn't really impressed with it, but it was decent quality. Overall, the camera doesn't blow me away, but I think it's going to be more than fine for most people out there. I actually liked it a lot, and I never took a picture where I wished I had another phone with me like the Pixel to take the picture instead. And I did feel like that all the time with the HTC 10. So one thing that really impressed me with the HTC 10 was the actual speaker quality. I know a lot of people didn't like it as much as some of the previous HTC phones, uh, but I actually really liked it. You know, they had some of the bass coming from the bottom here, the mids and the highs coming from the top. And they have the same setup on this phone, but they claim to have improved the sound quality and made it a lot louder, which it is. This thing gets really loud and it sounds really good. I don't have the Axon 7 with me to compare to, uh, so I'm not going to be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I would recommend checking out Jerome Ortega's video over here for a really good speaker test versus the S8 and the HTC 10, just so you can see how far they've come in speaker quality, because this thing gets loud. It's probably the best speaker on the market right now, in my opinion. So the HTC 10 had an incredible DAC and amp for listening to high quality audio, listening to headphones that need a lot of power to be driven properly. Unfortunately, they have ditched the headphone jack and moved to strictly USB-C, which is really disappointing in my opinion. That means that you need to use an adapter that they include in the box, which is nice, but unfortunately the adapter is slightly below average. Uh, nowhere near the quality of the HTC 10 DAC and amp does not provide enough power to drive hardly anything. But to be fair, most consumer headphones don't really need the power that something like the HD 650s would need or the HD 600. So this is gonna be just fine for most consumers in my opinion, unless you've invested something like 100 bucks into your headphones, 100 bucks at a bare minimum or more. You're not gonna really care about this transition. And if you've invested money into your headphones and your headphone system, you're probably not looking at this phone anyway unless you've got an external DAC that you plug in via USB-C, in which case you're in the same spot you would be for any other Android phone or iPhone. I just wish that the DAC and the amp on this headphone adapter here could have been better. I know the iPhone one is apparently much better than this is, but the audio quality in this doesn't come close to the old HTC 10. Even phones like the iPhone 6S or 6S Plus. Thankfully, HTC does supply some USB-C headphones out of the box. And these actually sound surprisingly good. It's probably the best sounding headphones that are included with a phone that I've tried in a long time. So they're USB-C headphones. You use them in combination with this HTC USonic noise cancellation. So you pop them in just like this. You go into the app. I already have a profile set up, but let's set up another one just so you can see. So what it does is it actually sends a burst of static into your ear canals and it maps the ear canals and it comes back with a recommendation based on the shape of your ear canals for what EQ you should use. Because they're not plugged in right now, it didn't have anything to bounce off of, so it's recommending a flat EQ. And that is actually a really nice feature because I thought that they were going to recommend just this V-shaped EQ, heavy on the bass, heavy on the treble, lowering the mids to make it kind of sound cleaner. But for my personal profile, they're actually recommending bumping up the mids and the treble slightly, which is a welcome change. I was totally expecting them to just do that traditional popular EQ. Uh, that I personally don't think sounds very great. The noise canceling works pretty well. They're decent headphones. You know, for, for 9 out of 10 people, I think that these headphones are going to be just fine. They're actually going to be pretty impressed with them. 
Uh, and it's, if you're buying this phone, you probably don't care about the headphone jack being lost here because if you bought this phone, I, in my opinion, you're one of two people. Uh, you're one of the types of people who doesn't really care about headphones and you'll go and you'll buy some of the cheaper ones at Best Buy, which is totally fine, you know, more power to you. These headphones are gonna be much better than any of those skull candies that you buy for six bucks. Way, way, way better. Or you're the type of person who has a really nice pair of headphones, but you've got your own DAC and amp that you plug in via USB-C anyway, in which case you don't care about the headphone jack being gone. So for either of those people, I think this phone is absolutely fine, and I would even recommend getting this phone to someone who doesn't necessarily care a whole lot about audio quality, because these headphones are really good. So one of the issues that I have with HTC here, when you're playing music, I've got the headphones in right now and you can see that there's this active notification. It's just telling you that USONIC, the noise cancellation feature built into these headphones and the profile that you have is active. And that's fine, but I don't need to be reminded of that. The problem is it doesn't go away. And if you go to the lock screen, it's gonna be on the lock screen here too. Now, HTC software only allows for two notifications before it starts minimizing them at the bottom and just giving you a number count and an icon. So that means if I got a text right now or an email, it would show up at the bottom here even though it could show up here for me to see. It's, it's not a big deal, but this is a persistent notification and it, ha it does the exact same thing. If I'm just playing the music on the speaker, you can see it's got the boom sound for built-in speakers here. At least when I'm using the speakers, it has a theater mode and a music mode so I can alternate between the two, but I don't see why this can't just be in the settings menu, why it has to be a persistent notification. The HTC 10 had it as well, and it's just kind of irritating. You can't get rid of it. All you can do is silence notifications for the Android system, which I don't recommend doing anyway. But overall, I just feel like if this phone had a headphone jack and if this phone had a really nice DAC people would not be giving HTC as much shit as they are. HTC at least tried to include some nice headphones they have some proprietary stuff that they're pushing which is not horrible it works pretty well but I really wish that this phone had a headphone jack instead of just the USB-C because if it did this would be one of my top phones of the year I think. I think it's, it's that big of a deal for a company like HTC to ditch that. The Bluetooth quality is also hugely improved over the HTC 10. I had tons of issues with Bluetooth on the HTC 10 just cutting in and out of my pocket whenever I was walking anywhere. This is much, much better, a much stronger signal when I'm walking the dog and I have my headphones in. No issues whatsoever for Bluetooth. Wi-Fi download speed is excellent. The last test I did hit about 112 down, which is my average. Let's see if it gets up there now. Just about. I'd say this is on par with the iPhone as far as the Wi-Fi connection goes. I've never had any issues with HTC for a connection like this. And the cell connection is decent. It's not quite as good as the Pixel. A few people actually told me that I was cutting in and out a bit more than usual, which is pretty disappointing. I do have kind of shitty service where I am at work, so I totally could blame this on T-Mobile instead of HTC. But on average, I had, in, in the week that I used this, I had a couple people tell me that they couldn't really understand me, whereas when I had a phone like the Pixel, I never got comments like that. But overall, it's a very solid cell connection. Even if it's average, it is still good enough for most people out there. And HTC traditionally has very strong signal strength. Let's talk about the software on this guy. It looks exactly the same as it did on the HTC 10. You can see this is the stock launcher here. Uh, the app drawer is a little weird. It's by page. You know, I'm used to Nova Launcher and Google now where you can just swipe up and down. Uh, you can sort it by most recent. The apps, you can sort them by custom, which does like the HTC and the system apps in the top. And then it does it alphabetically, as far as I can tell. If you swipe to the right, you've got Blink Feed, which is just like your Google Now feed or the Bixby feed. They're just trying to get in on that action too. Overall, the software experience is very quick, very snappy. I rarely had any hiccups or bugs, anything like that. The Snapdragon 835 is a beast. That thing is crazy fast. It just sips power on standby. Software-wise, the phone is great. They didn't make any change from the HTC 10. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing really depends on your opinion of HTC stock software. Me personally, I'm not nuts about it. It doesn't really do anything wrong. It just makes some small changes that I'm not crazy about. For example, the phone app, which I can't show you guys right now because it's got all my you know, details and people I've called and they're in their numbers. The phone app, to me, the aesthetic of that application does not match the Android ecosystem's aesthetic. The same goes for HTC's clock app. So I can just show you guys right here. I mean, I just don't think this looks that great. Is this a big deal? No. But why did they change it from the stock clock app for Google that matches the aesthetic of the entire ecosystem? 
it's just something that it's kind of nitpicky on my part. I'll be the first to admit that. But I wish that they would stop doing that. There's no need to not use the Google Phone app, the Google Clock app. I just think that those are far superior. Yes, you can replace the Clock app. No, you cannot replace the Phone app, unfortunately. So that's why it's kind of a big deal to me is because you can't replace those. But overall, this phone has really impressed me from a software standpoint. So one of the things HTC made a big deal about was this edge sense technology. It basically allows me to squeeze the side of the phone and something happens and I get to pick what happens. For example, for a short squeeze, I have it set to go to the camera. For a long squeeze and hold, it turns my flashlight on, which is pretty convenient in my opinion. However, I find myself actually forgetting that this is a feature and I don't use it that often. Uh, the only time that it really came in handy for me was when I was walking the dog and it was late at night and uh, he had done his business and I had to pick up after him but I couldn't see it because it was dark out and I had the bag in one hand and I'm kind of walking around looking for where his goodies are and I just remembered oh, I can squeeze my phone and the flashlight will come on instead of having to use two hands to activate that. So if you've got a dog I can see this coming in handy to get the flashlight going and if you just want to take a picture really quick you can squeeze it and get the camera app ready to go which is also nice. However, I found that this thing accidentally goes off all the time. For example, because the volume rocker is up here, the power button is below it, it, when I put my phone in the cradle in my car, the little grips have to go right here and guess where that is? Right where the edge sense sensor is located. So whenever I put my phone in my car, it typically thinks I'm doing a long hold and my flashlight will come on, which is mildly irritating. You can actually go into the settings here, go to edge sense, and then you can adjust all of these, uh, especially in advanced mode, you've got some extra options. So for me, I can customize just the short squeeze you can have it launch the camera app. Google Voice Assistant is baked in, which is really nice. Launch any specific app you want. Turn the flashlight on or off, etc. And then you can also customize the squeeze and hold action, which has the exact same features for you. If you go into adjust your squeeze force level, you can make it a shorter squeeze, a longer squeeze, more force, less force. If you do less force, it's going to activate easier, but also unintentionally. And if you do stronger force, it's going to be harder to activate, which in my opinion would defeat the purpose of having this here. So you got to pick something in the middle. And then you can test your squeeze force to see exactly how, press, how hard you need to press for something that works for you. Is this a gimmick? Probably. It came in handy once for me. As long as you remember you have it, it could be cool. But I'd rather have a headphone jack. HTC also includes this Sense Companion, which is basically Google Now or Bixby or Siri, whatever you want to call it. It's their own version of it. And just stop. Manufacturers, stop doing this. You're never going to be better than Google at this. Google has all of everyone's information. There's no privacy anymore. Google is going to be the best because they have all of the info. You're never going to be able to compete with them on something like this. So what they try to do is look at your calendar, look at some of the emails and the apps that you use and figure out if there's anything in the future that you might need assistance with. For example, lunch is coming up so they say, hey, here's some places you might like for lunch. Uh, here's some places to check out on your weekend trip. I don't have a weekend trip planned so I'm not quite sure if they're telling me that I need to do that or that they think that I already have one and that's just an error. I'm not quite sure, but I've never done any weekend trips on my calendar at least. Uh, one of the neat things that I have seen online that it'll do is if it sees in your calendar that you have something early the next morning, it'll remind you to set an alarm. Or if you have a bunch of stuff on your calendar, it'll remind you to charge your phone before you go out and do it. That is pretty cool. Uh, it'll also tell you that you're using the phone too much, which I don't think is very helpful because you bought the phone, I would assume HTC wants you to actually use it. But overall, it'll have little notifications pop up here, but they are just generally not helpful. Another feature that I love that manufacturers are including pretty much by default in all Android phones nowadays is this night mode. So we can go under display settings here, let's enable it. You can actually adjust the color temperature of the filter. If you want it warmer, so a heavier filter right here, oops, or less of a filter. It's a blue light filter, helps you guys go to sleep. Uh, and what I love about this too is scheduling. You can do a specific time if you want to. I love sunset to sunrise so I even have to think about it. And then I really like that I can adjust the color temperature because I can't on a lot of phones like the Google Pixel. So thank you HTC for allowing that sort of customization there. So you've also got an LED notification light at the top up here. You can't really change a whole lot in the way of settings. You can just basically turn it on or off. Uh, you can manage which applications it's used for, but these are your only options under that settings menu. The one thing though is it flashes frequently, about every three seconds. It's a green flash, it works much better than the Pixel, so it actually is useful compared to the Pixel's notif uh, LED notification that I don't think works very well at all. And the built-in launcher for HTC is pretty average in my opinion. Everybody should be using Nova Launcher at this point. You know, you swipe right and you've got Blink Feed, which is just 
all of your news, whatever they think you're going to need. Swipe again. You can actually search for content and add content here. So it's nice that it's built in, but it's basically just a Google Now replacement, and I would just recommend using Google Now. And finally, let's talk about battery life on this phone, which was average, a little disappointing. I mean, I don't know what I expected, a phone with a Quad HD display, 3000 milliamp hour battery, the exact same specifications as the HTC 10 basically, but an even bigger screen than the 10, and the 10 had pretty mediocre battery life to begin with. I really wish that this was one of the areas where HTC focused on, maybe put a bigger battery in there. I, I do think that that really would have helped. You know, for me, I get about three and a half to four hours of screen on time with this phone. That's not a great judge only because I work in an area that has horrible service and it takes a lot of battery for the phone to just sit there and maintain that signal strength. But overall, it's nowhere near as good as the Pixel XL or even the Pixel I found I got better battery life. I have that one with me right now. Uh, the S8 Plus got better battery life. Slightly disappointing, but it's going to make it through a typical day for most people. And it does have quick charge and quick charge works very well. So I think that for the average consumer, this is going to be just fine. So as I was using this phone, I kept thinking, who is this phone made for and who's going to use this and who's going to buy it? And I honestly had trouble answering that for a long time. HTC doesn't get a whole lot wrong with this phone. You know, it's beautiful. I mean, it's a work of art. Look at this thing and my fingerprints everywhere. It's got really snappy software. It's got a pretty good screen. It's got a great camera. It's got at least average battery life. It's going to last most people. It's got a lot going for it, but it was tough for me to think about who would be buying this phone. If you want a new phone and you don't want something that's got that 18 by 9 aspect ratio, you know, the curved display that Samsung's doing, which I personally don't like, I think this is actually a really good choice for a lot of people. I mean, it's beautiful. It's stupid fast, and it's going to last you a lot longer than a Samsung phone will because HTC software typically doesn't start to get really sluggish after a couple months like Samsung has historically. If you want a really good speaker, this is also a phone to get. It's got water resistance. You know, compared to something like the G6, the only thing it's missing is a headphone jack and that big, huge display with no bezels. If you don't mind the bezels and you don't want something in that weird aspect ratio, this is actually a really good choice for most people. I, I really wish that they had the, the headphone jack with the DAC. If they did, I think this would be a killer phone. I think I would be recommending this to just about everybody. And I really think that they missed an opportunity here because I think without the headphone jack, you know, copying Apple in that move, yes, they do provide the headphones, but there was no reason to do that, in my opinion. There was just no reason to do it considering how good the HTC 10 sounded and how well received it was for its audio quality. Overall, this is a good phone. I would recommend it to most people. I think generally most consumers will be happy with this phone. If you're an audio enthusiast, skip it. If you don't care, I think this is going to be a great phone for most people that is going to last a long time. And it's beautiful. Look at this.